This morning, we're going to be looking at Exodus chapter 33, verses 12 through 23. So if you would turn there in the word of God with me, Exodus 33, verses 12 through 23, we're going to be looking at the story of Moses and the people of God longing for the Father's face. Last week, we saw that the people of God were at Sinai. The people of God were based at Sinai in the wilderness. Moses was on top of the mountain of Sinai com communing with God, that he was re God was revealing to Moses the Ten Commandments. But while Moses was on top of Mount Sinai and the people of God were at the base of Mount Sinai, they had forgotten the faithfulness of God. They had forgotten about God's deliverance of salvation from Egypt and the bondage of slavery. And they gave away their hearts to something smaller than God. They gave away their hearts to the idol of the golden calf. And we learned the important lesson last week that when we forget the faithfulness of God, when we fail to remember God's work in our life, we will give our hearts and lives away to things that are smaller than God. But although God is burning with anger, that the people of God forgotten him. Moses appeals to God on top of Mount Sinai, and he appeals to God on the basis of the promise of God, the promise that God made in Genesis chapter three, that God, you would send the seed of the woman to crush the head of the serpent. He appeals to the faithfulness of God, that God, you promised to Abraham and our forefathers that you would send one through whom all the, the world would be saved that all the nations would be blessed. And it was through Moses appealing as, a, as one interceding on, on behalf of the people of God that God relents. And that here we turn our attention from chapter 32 to chapter 33. And as Pastor Sam reminded us that God is continuing to talk to Moses as a man talks to his friend. And now God is ready. God is now ready for the people of God to leave Sinai and go through the wilderness and head eventually to the promised land, the promised land that was promised to the forefathers. And that's where we pick up in Exodus chapter 33, verses 12 through 23. The word of God says, Moses said to the Lord, see you say to me, bring up this people but you have not let me know whom you will send with me. Yet you have said, I know you by name, you have found favor in my sight. Now therefore, if I have found favor in your sight, please show me now your ways that I might know you in order to find favor in your sight. Consider too that this nation is your people. And he said, my presence will go with you and I will give you rest. And he said to him, if your presence will not go with me, do not bring us up from here. For how shall it be known that I have found favor in your sight, I and your people? Is it not in your going with us so that we will be distinct, I and your people, from every other people on the face of the earth? And the Lord said to Moses, this very thing you have spoken, I will do. For you have found favor in my sight, and I know you by name. And Moses said, please show me your glory. And he said, I will make all my goodness pass before you and will proclaim before you my name, the Lord. And I will be gracious to whom I will be gracious and I will show mercy to whom I will show mercy. But you cannot see my face for man shall not see me and live. And the Lord said, behold, there is a place by me where you shall stand on the rock and while my glory passes by I will put you in the cleft of the rock and I will cover you with my hand until I have passed by then I will take away my hand and you shall see my back but my face shall not be seen the grass withers and the flower fades but the word of our Lord it stands forever amen back in the 1970s a doctor and psychologist came up with an experiment called the still face. The experiment went a little like this. They gathered a group of fathers and their babies in a room together. And they started off by having the father fully engage with their baby. They would be playful. 
They would make faces. They would sing with to the baby. And the baby would be full of joy. The baby would be perfectly content. And then they would have the father quickly turn their face for about 10 seconds. And then when the father would turn their face back to the baby, they would ask the father to look over the baby to keep their face completely still. Well, in a matter of about 20 seconds, the baby would start to come apart. About 30 seconds, the baby would start to cry. And in about 40 seconds, the baby would be screaming and throwing things. The baby fell absolutely to pieces. And then they would have the father turn away and then briefly turn back and re-engage the baby as they originally were, playful, engaged, making funny faces and singing to the baby. And the baby became content and stable once again. The conclusion of the still face experiment was this, that from the moment we are born, we desire the face of our father. And here is the reality. You and I never grow old and we never grow out of longing for the Father's face, for stability and for peace and for happiness. And it's here in Exodus chapter 33 that the people of God with Moses are longing for the face of their Father, longing to have the face of God in order to have the peace and the stability and the happiness that their heart craves. I wanna look at two things briefly this morning concerning the face of our Father. I want to look at the importance and the impossibility, the importance of having the Father's face and the impossibility of having the Father's face. Let's look at that first thing together, the importance of having the Father's face. In verses 12 through 15 of chapter 33, we see Moses longing for the Father's face. In verses 12 through 15, he keeps asking God, if you are going to send us on from Sinai into the promised land, we want your presence. And he asked for the presence of God over and over again. Well, that word presence in the Hebrew literally means face. You see, to have the presence of God is to have the face of God. But what was so important about having the presence and the face of God? Well, all throughout the scriptures, to have the presence and the face of God was to have the favor and approval of God. You see, the people of God understood that if we have your presence, if we have your face, that means we have your full approval, favor, and blessing. I think it mentions the the word favor, the favor of the Lord about five times in this passage. So to have the presence and the face of God is to know that God is pleased with you, to have his favor and approval. If there's any children listening to this message, it's as if God is smiling down upon you. To have the presence in the face of God means for for God to be happy with you. And this is what Moses and the people of God longed for. If we are going to go forward into the promised land, we have to know that we have your full approval and blessing. We need to know God that you're happy with us. And we see it through these verses, 12 through 15. We see Moses desperate for the presence and for the face of God, for for God to be considered, as Pastor Sam mentioned, his friend. We see it in verse 13, for instance. In verse 13, Moses says, If I found favor in your sight, please show me your way so that I might know you. What does it mean for for someone like Moses to ask God to show me your ways? Well, we see this all throughout the scripture, the people of God longing for God to show them his ways. In Deuteronomy 30, it says, I command you today to love the Lord your God and to walk in his ways. Hosea 14, who is wise, let him understand these things. Who is prudent, let him know them, for the ways of the Lord are right. Isaiah 55, for my thoughts are not your thoughts, my ways are not your ways, says the Lord, for as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways. All throughout the Bible, 
the people asked God, show me your way so that I might know you. You see, to know the ways of God is to know everything about God. God, I want to show me your way so that I might know who you are, so that I might know how you think, so that I might know how you move. How does God show us his ways today? Well, he shows us his ways through his word. He has given us his word so that we might know the ways of God. That's how he shows us his ways. And Moses is saying, if I'm going to have the presence and the face of God, I need to, ha- I need to be shown your ways so that I might fully know you. You know, this verse this week was really convicting for me because I had to stop and think, do I really hunger for the, to know the ways of the Lord as Moses did. You, you sense the, the desperation in Moses' voice. God, I want your presence and I wanna, I wanna see your face in such a way that, that I need to be shown your ways. I wanna know you more. I wanna know who you are and how you move and how you think. And it's my prayer that through this season, that God would use this season of quarantine to to reestablish in all of us a hunger for God's word, a hunger to know God more, a a desire to know his ways, less of me and more of God. God, I wanna know who you are because this is the only way I can survive. Moses understood that the only way I can move through this life, the only way I can confront the fears and the anxieties and the struggles of life are to know your ways. Show me your ways, O Lord. But we also see Moses longing for the presence of God in verse 15. Look at the bold request he makes in verse 15. Look at that verse with me. He says, if your presence will not go with me, do not bring us up from here. What's Moses saying? Your presence, your face, your approval is so important to me and so important to us as the people of God that if we don't have it, we don't wanna go. That's a bold statement before God. This is, think about the, the confidence that Moses has right now before God. But this is what Moses is saying. The promised land means nothing if you're not there with us. You see, the promised land is the benefit, but God, you're the benefactor. We want, the, we want God, not just the promised land, but this promised land that you've promised to our forefathers and to us means nothing if you're not there. There is a desperate sense that Moses shares with God, this desperation for the presence and the face and the approval and the favor of God. God, if you're not going to go with us, we don't want to go. We will not move without you. Do you have that desperation? Do you have that hunger to know God's ways, to, to, to be shown the ways of the Lord, to know God in such a way, desperate for the presence and the face of God we see here with Moses and the people of God, the importance of having the presence and the face of the Father. But here's the problem. And the second thing I want you to see in this passage, we see that it's absolutely impossible on our own. We see also in this passage, not only the importance of having the Father's face, but we see the impossibility on our own of having this face. In verse 18, after Moses pleads for the face and the presence and the favor of God, Moses in verse 18 says, please show me your glory. Moses says, I want to see it. I want to see you and your glory and your beauty and your magnificence, God. And God probably surprises Moses with his response. After asking to see the glory, God says in verse 20, but you can't. You can't see my face because man will not live if they see the glory of God. You see, what God is revealing in verse 20 is the great dilemma of all humanity, that God is perfect and we are not, and God is altogether lovely and glorious and we are not. And from the very beginning in Genesis chapter 3, this has been the dilemma, that there is a divide between a holy God and an unholy people. And God is revealing that dilemma to Moses, that by your own power and according to your strength, you cannot see my glory and see my face. It's absolutely impossible, Moses. 
And so it begs the question, if we need the face of the Father, if we can't survive without it, if we need it from the very beginning, how in the world, if Moses can't have the Father's face, how in the world can you and I have it? Well, the answer is in verse 19. In verse 19, God said, I will make my goodness pass before you, and I will be gracious to whom I will be gracious and merciful to whom I will be merciful to. You see, it is the goodness and the grace and the mercy of God that alone makes the way for an unholy people like us, like Moses, like the people of God, to be able to encounter the glory and the face of God. And it would be centuries later that God would send his son and on the cross, Jesus would take on our unrighteousness and take on the sin that prevented us from seeing the glory of God. And on the cross, we are told that God turns his face away from Jesus. You see, on the cross, and this is the good news this morning, that God the Father turns his face away from God the Son. And on the cross, Jesus gets the back of God, so that we could forever, by faith alone, have the face of God. Jesus loses the pleasure, and Jesus loses the favor and approval of God the Father on the cross, so that by faith, and faith alone in Jesus, we could forever have the favor and approval of our Father. A few months ago, I heard the story of a single father raising his four-year-old son. The father had lost his wife and he was raising this son by himself. And the son was having trouble sleeping at night. And so the father would tuck his son away and pray with his son and read to his son. But without fail, at some point in the middle of the night, he would hear the footsteps down the hallway and the son would climb up into the bed with the father and the father would try to get the son to fall back asleep. But eventually the father would feel the tap on, the, on his shoulder and the father would turn around and the, the son would say, his little boy would say, dad, I can't go to sleep unless I see you. What was he saying? The little boy was saying, unless I have your face, I cannot rest. But here's the truth this morning. You and I cannot rest without the Father's face. The truth this morning is you and I are little boys and little girls who are longing for the face of our Father. And the good news this morning, whether you've had your Father's face or not in this life, the good news is that because of Jesus Christ and Jesus alone, you can have the perfect Father's face. That you can have the perfect Father's approval and pleasure. That the perfect Father in Jesus is happy with you this morning. Deep down, we are little boys and little girls that want the Father's face. And maybe even this morning, maybe even today, can be to the day for the first time you ask and receive your Father's face. You see, for those that know Jesus this morning, it's as if God is saying, my face is shining upon you and I don't care how many faces in your life have turned away, my face will always be smiling down upon you. Can you imagine what it would be like to live in light of this truth? to know that you have the God of the universe, that you have his face shining upon you, to, to know that the God who created the heavens and the earth, that in Jesus Christ, that you have his full approval and pleasure. For those that are in Jesus Christ, you know this good news. Live in light of it. Maybe you would ask God in this season, Lord, renew and restore that reality, that truth. That, that I live in light of, of having my Father's full approval and favor. Re renew in me what it means to live in light of having the Father's full pleasure.
But if you don't know Jesus this morning, I pray that today would be the day that maybe you've gone through your life longing for favor, longing for approval, and today would be the day where you would say, I can actually have it. That in Jesus Christ, I can have the full pleasure and favor of God. Here's the good news this morning. By simply transferring your trust from yourself and placing your trust in Jesus Christ, you can have the full pleasure, approval, and favor of the Father. Here's the good news. That God the Father can be your friend. And better yet, he can be your father. What seems too good to be true, in Jesus Christ, we believe today that it is true. To have the Father's face it seems like a dream, but in Jesus, it's the dream that comes true for all who believe.